So I'm pleased to introduce next Trang Lei, a postdoc here at the University of Pennsylvania. And Trang will be speaking about a package that builds interpretable decision tree visualizations. Thank you, Trang. Thank you, Stefan. Um, great. So my name is Trang. I'm a postdoc with Jason Moore at Penn. And uh, I'm excited to share with everyone the new package um, tree heater for visualizing decision trees. And this is my first package ever written for visualization. So I'm really looking forward to a lot of feedback from everyone. Um, and I just tweeted out a um, link to the slide deck. So if you want to follow along, feel free to do it uh, there. OK, so the tagline for this package reads, your decision tree may be cool, but what if I tell you you can make it hot? And you do that by incorporating a heat map into your decision tree. So um, really, the idea come from looking at heat maps, and you know I've been doing that a lot. And I thought instead of looking at you know the clustering of the samples and the features using hierarchical clustering, what if we do this grouping using decision trees? And um, so really, the idea comes from the heat map side, not the decision tree side. But um, here we are. And before um, we go any further, and most of you probably already know this that. Um, about decision trees, but and especially if you attended the Tidy Models workshop yesterday um, by Allison Hill, probably a good one, um, then you probably know that decision trees are essentially just very simple tree-based machine learning model um, that gives you prediction of the labels based on the features. Okay, um, so before we go into what Tree Heater actually does, let me walk you through a few um, tools that, like tool and tool sets that currently we have in R for drawing decision trees. And the first is R part plot. You have probably seen this um, earlier in Daniela Witten's talk, where she showed like this decision tree where um, at the node you have the condition. And if your sample satisfies this condition, you go to the left. If not, you go to the right. And then eventually you arrive at the terminal node or a leaf node where there is a label for your sample and also kind of shows you, um, I think with the shading here, how confident the model is at predicting that label for the sample. Um, the this network package is also really, really cool to drawing a lot of network structure, but also especially this tree. There's some decision tree in this case. Um, on the left, you see here is actually regression tree. And let me hide that. Um, so in this case, I think they're trying to predict the pedal length from the iris data set. Plot party function from party kit is great because not only it shows you the feature name, it also shows you the corresponding p value. So that shows like how important that feature is in predicting the final outcome. And at the leaf node here, um, it's a bit hard to see, but it shows you the number of the samples in that leaf node and the error corresponding with it. You can even draw histograms at the leaf node. And ggparty is another package that goes one step further, allows you to do, say, in here, histogram or density plot in the inner nodes and scatter plots on the leaf nodes. Um, and I just want to give one more mention to a, a Python library called dtreeviz, um, which does really nice plots. And, and I really like the idea here where you have histograms, like stack histograms um, on the in the nodes and pie charts at the leaf nodes. And what's important here is that with these pie charts, you can kind of see how many samples are there in each of these leaf nodes and how, how accurate they are. OK, so what's different in Tree Heater? Um, this is a decision tree model that is predicting the penguin species from um, using the everyone's most beloved uh, Palma penguins data set. And uh, at the end, at the leaf node here, we see that this is a heat map. On the rows, we have the features. And on um, each of the very, very thin columns you see here is a sample or a penguin. Um, so I think that some of the most important um, information from 
this visualization really can be immediately seen. So for example, you can see immediately how big each of these sleep nodes are and um, where the misclassifications are. Um, and some more specific things too, like, you know, the Gen 2 penguins look like they, in general, have higher, um, or sorry, bigger flip length and, uh, and bigger Coleman or bill, and they live in, in the Biscoe Island. So those are the things that, that you can draw from, from this type of visualization. Um, and the core function of tree heaters called heat tree, um, the main argument can be an object of, uh, it can be a party object or a cons party object. And so what that means is that you compute your tree using you know, either the party kit package or you can use our part to compute the tree and then convert it um, into the party object using S party. Um, you can also use party node to define your manual tree. So you literally draw that. I'll show you an example in a little bit. Um, or you can just feed in a data frame. And in that case, you would need to supply a target label so that tree heater can um, automatically the, computing the conditional tree for you, um, predicting that particular target outcome. Um, and because this is our medicine, um, I, want, I wanted to apply this tree heater to a um, clinical data set. In this case, this data set contains um, 351 blood samples of patients who were admitted to the Tanji Hospital in Wuhan, China from uh, January 10th to February the 18th. And the task here is to predict whether they survived um, or not from COVID-19. And the, there were three features that were um, selected using their importance score from an XG Bruce model, which are lactic dehydrogenase, which is, um, or LDH, the lymphocyte levels, and also high sensitivity C-reactive protein or CRP. And so what you want to do is uh, really just put in the code of the data frame, um, make sure it's you know, all clean and in the tidy um, form format. But all you need to do is put that in and make, define that, okay, I want to predict the outcome and this is your result. So once again, we see that these three variables are very important variables um, in predicting the, the trees itself. But looking at the heat map, you can kind of already uh, see that, oh, wow, it looks like the patients who did not survive the disease have very high level of LDH and CRP in their blood sample. So that's something that, you know, immediately jump, jumps out at you. Um, oh, and I forgot to mention that each of these uh, leaf nodes here are uh, labeled based on the majority of votes and colored so as to um, correlate with the actual, the true outcome. Um, and the um, it, within the heat map, the lighter the color is, the um, higher value it is. And there's some scaling happening here, um, and I can get to that if, later in the question. Um, and but you know, say you don't want to look at the heat map; you really just want a tree, then um, you can get that as well, just defining feet equals NA. And there are many, many other options that you can do with this um, in the vignette. Um, lastly, I just want to show how this looks a little bit insane, but um, it's just a way to draw out your decision tree. And this is uh, using party kit syntax. And so um, you can say, like, you put this node next to the other one. It's the kit of this one on the right, um, so on and so forth. And um, to just kind of make your own custom tree as well. Um, and there's some statistics that you can print with it. Okay, um, so I invite you to browse the vignette. Um, there are a lot of things you can do. You can kind of adjust all these nodes if you want to, spread around, um, adding more meaningful statistics here, for example, P values, um, more labeling legends and whatnot. Um, not showing any, you know, outcome at all, and just really literally the tree. Um, choose whatever features you want. How do you apply it to regression data? Um, all of that's in here. So uh, that's all I have. I thank um, my boss Jason Moore for um, helping me throughout this and and uh, brainstorming um, every little piece. A lot of this is built on you know ggplot2, party kit, and ggparty. Um, and I learned the, a lot about heat maps from the heat map lead package. Um, so 
So yeah, I'll stop here and take any questions. Thank you. Trang, this is uh, super neat. And I think as Peter pointed out, uh, very makes these, um, makes these uh, decision trees really interpretable. So I think this is a great visualization. Um, uh, there's a few questions. Um, so the first one was the one with the most upvotes is, can you use this with a random forest? OK, um, this is a great question. I, I thought about this before, too. The, the thing with random forest is you have not just one tree, but so many trees. Right. So how, yeah, so there's, you know, if, if you can find a way to average it somehow and, and get together one single tree, then yes, after that, then you can just put in the single tree and our tree heater, and then it will do it for you. Um, but yeah, I, yeah, that's it. <laughs> Everyone wants random forest. Can you control colors of outcome labels uh, or a heat map palette? Yes, yes. Uh, yeah, if you go into, go into the vignette, you see a lot of uh, things that you can do with it. I kind of gloss over it a little bit. But um, yeah, like the, the second example here, I believe, is uh, yeah, like I changed the, the, the colors of the outcome a little bit here. I um, haven't done a lot of, yeah, I think there's some changing in the heat map color as well. Yeah, so there, you can do that. And if there's not a, um, uh, you know, an option to do something, just, you know, put an issue up and, and I'll be happy to take on the challenge. That's awesome. Uh, and then uh, Isra is asking, can we use this for omics data with large numbers of variables? Yeah, so it depends. <laughs> um, I think that, that I have run this with, uh, you know, about 5,000 uh, features and it works. Like it runs within, you know, two minutes or so um, or less. Um, but the, the thing is, you know, it, it so de much depends on how good your decision trees are. So I have seen um, I've cases where the decision tree doesn't do very well. Like, you know, it may classify this classification accuracy may be like 70 percent. Um, and it doesn't really the patterns don't really jump out at you. Mm -hmm. And then in that case, I don't know how useful it is. Um, so it depends on how good your decision trees are. And um, but, you know, with omics data and, and I talk about this with like any large scale data as well, there's many things that you can do to either class the features or select the features, whether randomly or non-randomly. Um, and, you know, downsample the samples, uh, the number of observations or something. But yeah, so those things you can do um, to, to try to incorporate. Very cool, Trang. Thanks for an outstanding talk. And Absolutely. Thanks I so much, guys. Yeah.